Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do a decoupage project. I don't really know if it's going to work or not, but I thought that I would videotape it anyway and share it, whether it works or not. So I thought that I would show you what we need for this project first. You're going to need some kind of trimmer so that we can trim our chipboard down. I had my husband cut a batting tube. This uh, was a tube that was inside a roll of batting. And he didn't do a great job of straightening it out. But I'm going to hope that I can use the both ends that are straight. So it will sit on my base, which are these pieces. You're going to need something to spread glue with. You're going to need some glue. I'm going to use PVA glue to attach my pieces. You're also going to need some Mod Podge. I got the satin finish. You can get regular finish, glitter finish, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And then I have a Solo cup here with some water just to rinse off my brush because these are water activated glues. And my base here, I am using butcher paper or freezer paper so that I don't mess up my cutting mat. And I am also going to be using a bag of crumbs. And this one says that it's triangles. Um, I don't normally use triangles because I saved them and make half square triangles. But we're going to make an exception today since this is the bag that I pulled out. And we're going to go ahead and clear this area out so we can get started. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to glue these three pieces of chipboard. They were actually leftover pieces from me doing mini albums. If you haven't seen my mini albums videos, please go check those out. I'm going to see if I can like square this up a little bit. They should be about three and seven eighths. <laughs> See if that's a little straighter this doesn't have to be super perfect but that's a whole lot better so we're gonna go with that so you can also cut this with a utility knife as well and I'm going to be wrapping my fabric pieces around the edges so the first thing that I want to do is I just want to glue these pieces down so I'm just putting down some PVA glue I'm going to use my brush to spread and this glue dries clear And then we're going to glue again. I have four base pieces just so that I can give it some stability. And then I'm just going to put this into my water just to get off some of the glue so that my bristles don't dry. This one on top. And then I'm going to lift up 
my entire piece because I don't want it to actually stick to the freezer paper. Call from McCall Doris. I'll be right back. I've had my piece here drying and they're not no longer moving, which is what I wanted. And so now I'm trying to decide if I want to put fabric down on this base layer first. So I think maybe I will do that. So we will get some of our fabric scraps out. And then we're going to use some of the Mod Podge to get the to get some of this fabric to stick. And again, these are half square triangles that I have been collecting. Some of them are big, some of them are small. And so I think what I'm going to do is start with the underside first. And we're just going to put down a layer of Mod Podge. use as much glue as possible and then we are going to be putting more on the board as needed just a thin layer here And this is going to be the back side of our unit. So I'm just going to use some of the bigger pieces here. Rub that down. And I'm going to use actually some paper scissors because I don't want my real scissors to get gunked up. So we'll just use some paper scissors here, <laughs> cut off some of these excess tails, smooth that out onto the adhesive. And when a uh, Mod Podge dries, it actually dries clear. This one is a satin finish. And so then I will put a little bit more glue onto areas where I'm going to add a little piece and if it's too big I can cut it down as well and so since this is the underside I'm not worried about it being super pretty and I'm not really worried about this entire project being pretty <laughs> because it's just going to store stuff, but I do like color, so I just wanted to add some color to it. And so then we're going to go back over the top with more Mod Podge. So now I'm going to wait for this to dry before I trim off the ends and flip over and repeat this process on the other side. All right, I'm back. This is not completely dry, but it's dry enough that I can move on to the next step, which is trimming the edges of these fabric pieces. And we're going to be wrapping whatever fabric we have on top around to the underside. So that's why I'm not really worried about trimming this too accurately. If you want to, you can use an X-Acto blade to trim this as well. Okay. 
So now we want to do uh, fabric pieces on the top. And I was thinking that I should put fabric pieces on the top first because it would just be easier than putting pieces up the up these ends here. So we're going to do that next. And we're back to our Mod Podge. So we're going to let this dry before I get to the point where I need to trim the ends and then um, I will like trim about a quarter of an inch that will flip to the back. That's the plan right now. So we're going to go ahead and let this dry. We're just going to take a couple of hours maybe for this to dry. But while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and start with my poles. Start decorating those as well. So I'm just going to slide that over. And we're going to do the exact same thing with our poles. So I am not going to show you this entire process. You kind of get what I'm doing here. And we're just going to put some Mod Podge on the bottom. And then I'm going to stick some pieces down. Okay, so I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to continue to wrap fabric on both of the pieces that I have here. And when they're all dry, I will come back and show you my next step. So guys, I just wanted to come back and show you that I've got my two tubes here. I have covered them from bottom to top. And then I tucked a little bit of the fabric on the inside just so I wouldn't have raw edges. But you don't have to do that. It's not that critical of a project. And then I am down here now. This is not quite dry, but it's almost dry. And I might want to fold up my paper here so that I don't get glue. 
back on this part but what I want to do now is just go ahead and even off some of these edges because I'm just going to flip these onto the back and I'm eyeballing about a quarter of an inch could be a little bit could be about a half inch I'm back I had my camera battery run out so I just continued to trim my edges up and now I am just going to put Mod Podge along the edge and along this top again so that I can fold the top edges to the back so I want to make sure I get those side edges as well so that it has something to stick to when I flip this over to the back I would almost recommend not trimming your ends because I may have mine a little too short so maybe you might want to try an inch this is actually my first time doing a project like this so learn from me <laughs> I want to do some other Mod Podge and fabric projects. I know one for sure that I have in my on my to-do list that hasn't been done. So I thought this would be a great way to introduce myself with this project. And then after I finish this, we're going to let this dry. So it'll be another couple of hours. And we'll be almost finished with our project. And then once this dries, if you need to put more glue to hold something down, you can most definitely do that. If you missed a spot, you can do repairs as well. And this is how it's going to look on the other side. So we're just going to flip this back, sit it in a spot that does not have glue, and let it dry. And um, we'll come back and finish off this project. Guys, we are back. And we have our base piece. It's completely dry, or I think it's dry. I have my two pieces here. On the top, I tucked in any excess fabric that I had. And on the bottom, I just trimmed it off. And I'm using the manufacturer end of this batting roll. 
because it's cut straight as i told you my husband cut these and so they are not really straight here they're kind of lopsided but i really don't care for the purpose that i'm going to be using them i just want to know which end is the sh flat end because now i am going to take some hot glue gun and some hot glue and i am going to stick these onto this base both of these and i have that end that i cut that's straight that's going to stick down so i have my hot glue gun here we are going to see if i can get some hot glue around the edge of this container here I guess you could have decided to put this together before putting your fabric pieces on as well. Then your outside here would be a lot neater. But this is just one of those impromptu projects that I just started. And so now I am going to do the same thing to this end. I'm back to show you how my finished project looks. Down there you have the base. And up at the top you can see where I have my leader grips in these tubes this tube is also wide enough that you can put your yardsticks in i do have a couple of yardsticks that i will probably also toss in here but yes this is awesome i've been looking for something that i could make or use to put my leader grip my leader grip snaps actually snap to the round tube that's inside of here and it's actually called leader grips and i'll go down to the bottom and i'll zoom in down there so you can see that blue pole that's sticking out the end of my leader down there and it actually holds my quilt back into the quilt you can also i use two of those one on this top rail and then one on my backing rail down below you can also use a third one to have the bottom of your quilt top on it as well. But I don't attach my quilt top. I always float my quilt. So I only have two of those. Sorry about the jerking there, guys. But these have been laying on the floor. And been laying on the floor for about maybe three years. And just recently, I've had my table expanded because of adding some equipment to my gamel. And so now I'm much closer. I don't have as much room over on this side of the room as I used to. And so I've been stepping on them a little bit. And so I don't want to crack them. So that's why I needed something. And so I was just sticking them into the batting cardboard frames. And I decided to just cut them because they were too long. And then I always had to take the whole batting thing up to get them out. So now I have this little base. I'm going to be just putting it over in that corner somewhere. And then I can just pull out the pieces that I need. And again, I'm going to be also adding in my yardsticks. This is actually my second time recording this portion of this video. The first time I tried to install these, I installed it with hot glue, which worked. And then when I picked this up, it actually fell apart. So we are going to go to plan b <laughs> so what i have here is some loctite super glue and we're going to see if i can super glue these edges down onto this base here so i am going to get out my glue start adhering I 
And I know you probably can't see me glue because I got to have it up so I can see it. So I'm sorry about that. But I'm actually putting glue, super glue, around the outer perimeter. And then I'm going to stick this down. And I will have to hold this because it is not hot glue. I tried using the hot glue because I felt like it would dry faster and it did, but it did not hold the weight. As soon as I picked it up, it was good for one of them, but then the other one, I felt if one came off, both of them might come off. So I'm going to redo it with super glue and hope it works. So I am going to let that one go while I prepare this next one here with super glue. And I'm hoping that none of this drops into my hand. <laughs> So, if this is a problem, I think maybe just gluing these first with the PVA to the cardboard and then just putting your fabric around it might have been best in this instance. So now super glue is going to need a while to dry. So I'm going to let this dry before I put anything in it. And I'll come back maybe tomorrow because it's like 11 p.m. right now. And so I don't want to stay up any longer tonight or stay in this particular area anyway. So I'll come back tomorrow and show you the final results. I'm back with my completed project. I have tested it. I have picked it up with one hand, done some shaking. And now this concoction is holding. So this is what I would recommend is to make sure that you use crazy glue instead of using hot glue gun or glue from a hot glue gun. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye T-Quilters. Stay blessed.